There's a movie that I've been meaning to tell you about for a, a long time. Have you ever seen the movie Bitter Rice? Mm-hmm. You have seen it. No. <laughs> I don't know why I said mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a foreign film. I, I imagine with the name Bitter Rice it would have to be. That, see, that's the thing. It's terribly named. Yeah, it's, that's it's about a, the worst name ever. It's that's an like a rural juror. But it's a great movie. It's like the um, driving with the boom boom in the back. What's driving that? with a boom boom in the what back. Is, what is it called? Speed Racer? Where they got to drive slow or else they blow up. Oh, what the, the hell is it called? With the boom boom in the back. Wages of Fear. <laughs> Wages of Fear. <laughs> it's, I think it's as good as Wages of Fear. The truck with a boom boom in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's summer. Yes. And that means one thing, that my cats are chasing chipmunks into the house. That's the only thing it means. And then it's a frenzy to get these things out of the house. But you know what? I like to imagine it's always the same chipmunk. And he keeps coming into the house because he's looking for something. He is the Indiana Jones of chipmunks. <laughs> Speaking of Indiana Jones, uh, recently you made some comments about Raiders of the Lost Ark to me that I found interesting. In my mind, it might be the best movie of all time. That is a bold statement, yes, Mr. Jones. Which is something I said about The Third Man a couple episodes ago. Fedoras really do it for me. I think that the best movie of all time would have to be an action movie of some sort. Film is such a visual medium and nothing plays better than action. And an action movie done well is the pinnacle of cinema. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, well, it was tr Transformers. Yeah, okay, not Transformers. I'm talking like Lawrence of Arabia is an action movie. Sure. All Quiet on the Western Front is an action movie. Uh, but Raiders is an action movie that is like, it, it, everything before it leads up to Raiders of the Lost Ark, everything after it is influenced by it. It's a story that takes place in the 30s using a uh, style from the 40s and 50s, made by kids who were film school brats in the 60s and 70s. It basically jump-started the 80s. The blockbusters really became defined by that movie. And then everything since then, good or bad, is basically trying to do it. A cinema crossroads. Raiders of the Lost Ark is all of cinema history. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Good. I hope you're in a place of mental fortitude. Because if you're not careful, tonight's movie might just make you go insane. Yep, just like that fellow back there. Yes. It's a movie that has been described as a dark farce, a metaphysical murder mystery, and a cosmic love story. It's, it's good. I like movies that can't decide on their tone. Go on. <laughs> You're not ready for the tenth. You're too advanced for the eighth. So I give you the ninth configuration. What the hell is that? I have no <laughs> idea what's in front of me here. Released in 1980, based on the 1978 William Peter Blatty novel of the same name, which itself was a rewrite of an earlier Blatty novel, 1966's Twinkle Twinkle Killer Kane. You've never heard of this movie, that's crazy. I've never heard of this movie. Great. The author also directed the film, having first intended it to be directed by his exorcist collaborator, William Friedkin. Not being able to find a studio to produce the picture, they all backed away from it for various reasons. Mr. Blatty provided half of the $4 million budget himself and got PepsiCo to provide the other half. So we have Coca-Cola sponsoring Mac and Me, and then we have Pepsi sponsoring the Ninth Configuration. <laughs> Cola Wars back on. We're going to decide it today. The film stars Stacey Keach, Scott Wilson, better known to modern audiences as Herschel from The Walking Dead, huh. and welcome to the basement alumnus, Robert Loggia. Expect a lot of graveling and growling tonight. Yeah. You never heard of this movie. That's crazy. I've never heard of this movie. <laughs> Evidently, it's about an astronaut who finds Jesus Christ on the moon. <laughs> I have a gift for you today, of course, but I'm not going to give it to you until the end of the episode. Oh! So, home viewer, won't you configure yourself on the old leather couch with us as we take off into the weirdness and the madness of the ninth configuration. Toward the end of the war in Vietnam, an unusually high percentage of American servicemen suddenly manifested symptoms of psychosis. And their average age was 19. No, 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 19. 19. And had no prior history facts. Whose average age was 19? You can keep saying it, man. I'm not going to get the reference. Somebody's coming. Captain Cutshaw is in that castle up in... <laughs> 
A military facility for troubled Vietnam vets has been set up in an abandoned castle in the Pacific Northwest. You know the one. You've always wanted to visit it, right? Everyone's crazy in a wildly different way. This is an asylum with an immense costuming department. A great psychiatrist is coming, Colonel Hudson Kane. I hate this song. You do? I do. Can't stand it. I like the song. My mom used to sing it to me when I was a baby. Well. <laughs> He's greeted by Colonel Fell, a doctor in short pants. That doctor's got pants problems. My jacket, my shirt, and my pants. The next day in his office, Colonel Kane is accosted by Captain Cutshaw, an astronaut who was supposed to go into space, but ended up not doing it and getting committed to this asylum instead. And Cutshaw is one of those very literate crazy people. He goes on, he lays it on pretty thick. Read it out loud. It's my therapy. Why don't Read it! Or I'll go crazy, damn it, I swear it! Go crazy? <laughs> Powerful drugs could be insinuated into my soup. That's my favorite uh, Campbell's soup. Chicken, noodle, and wow, powerful wow. drugs. <laughs> and goes on and on about his St. Christopher medal. Stop looking at my medal. No, I'm not. Yes, you were. You covered it. Just like you covered my ice cream bar. <laughs> He's got the space. Madness! He's just got regular madness. No, he's an astronaut. Oh yeah, it is space madness! He ends up giving the medal to Colonel Kane. All these patients in this castle have their own little nutty agenda. Captain Fairbanks smashes the wall with a hammer. I am punishing the atoms. I am making an example of them. I am lowering the resale value of this insane asylum. Lieutenant Reno is adapting Shakespeare. For dogs! God damn it, somebody's got to do it. And various other things. There's a blackface performance. And the sky is blue above. It's been so long since we have blackface on our show. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> There's Captain Bendish, who seems legitimately insane, probably because he's played by Robert Loja, who's on full high anger alert. You bastard! You're a giant bird! Robert Loja, grizzled at any age. <laughs> He was a grizzled baby. <laughs> <laughs> he might actually also be in the blackface, I'm not positive. Could be Loja. Can't tell when you're in blackface. It's a disguise. Maybe you ought to give them all shock treatment, you know? <laughs> Just like the Ramones sang about. <laughs> oh, don't give them shock treatment. Give them lobotomies. Just like the Ramones sang about. <laughs> Colonel Kane seems to have some issues of his own. <laughs> Inner mutterings. Meanwhile, on the moon... <laughs> Kane has a bizarre dream that night about walking on the moon. The ninth configuration. Ding! Worshipping a space crucifix, protein atoms, the existence of God, it's all very bizarre. Colonel Kane wakes up and tells Dr. Fell about the dream and he's concerned. It isn't my dream. What, you rent it? Yeah, it's strange. Weird is the word. I mean, that's kind of transference a little far. No, the bird is the word, just like the Ramones sang. <laughs> Kane also confesses that a bloodthirsty Marine named Killer Kane is his brother. Dr. Fell says, hey, I used to be friends with the Colonel Kane. He looked a lot like you, but he wasn't you. This isn't any sort of foreshadowing at all, right? Pepsi! Hey, there we go. Two million dollars well spent. Your planet has demanded your return. That's Loja. Oh, yeah. They say, in space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. In space, they can hear Robert Loja scream. That's how loud he is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> After being bombarded by all this kookiness, Colonel Kane decides... We're going to indulge the men. He's going to let them do their own thing, unrestricted. If they want to reenact the Great Escape, he'll get them Nazi uniforms. He brings in a whole pack of dogs for dog auditions. And tell your stupid agent never to waste any more of my time. They think Colonel Kane is their new best buddy. Maybe your P.T. Barnum. Post-traumatic stress Barnum. Kane has a series of philosophical arguments with Cutshaw. And how could man be more than a talking tennis playing pen to bear if it weren't at least for the possibility of suffering? So how is it that there is love in this world? Take me to Mass. Cutshaw wants to go to church, and he makes a big scene there. Sanchez! <laughs> Sanchez. <laughs> if you die first and there's life after death, will you give me a sign? I'll try. Major Groper informs Colonel Kane that there's a new inmate, Lieutenant Gilman. He remembers him from Vietnam, from back when Dr. Kane 
was Killer Kane. Dr. Fell informs everyone that due to a computer mix-up, he was given an identity of a different Colonel Kane, but Killer Kane regrets all the killing that he did in Vietnam, and he wants to help people instead. So he's convinced himself that he's a psychiatrist. He suppressed the Kane who was the killer and became the better self that's in all of us. Dr. Fell thinks they need to l just let him keep doing that. Also, Dr. Fell is Killer Kane's brother. Wow! Cutshaw is upset about this whole thing. He steals a car and he escapes. I'm out of here. Cutshaw goes to a bar where a biker gang is hanging out. One of the bikers, the head of the gang, who's got a huge head. Hey, I know you. You're that astronaut who went crazy. And they start pushing him around and they spill drinks on his head. Ten. Nine. It's configuration. Three. Two. One. Splash down. Kane to the rescue. He says, give me that, astronaut. We're leaving. Biker gang's not going to take that. It's like, oh, you think you're tough? We're bikers. We don't care that you're Marines. Marines are chicken. <laughs> you know, he's going to be calling him a jive turkey. And they make sport of Kane. Humiliate both of them to the extreme. These bikers keep pushing him, and they keep pushing him, and they keep pushing him. Until this happens. <laughs> Killer Kane is back, and he beats up the entire bar. All right, you pixies, out through the door or through the window. <laughs> Killer Kane has killed again. Cutshaw is shaken up, and they go back to the castle. The cops show up at the castle, and they're like, we got to take this Kane away. He murdered multiple people. Meanwhile, Cutshaw and Kane are in a room together. They're having a very deep conversation. Colonel Kane's looking real sleepy. He's talking real slow. And what do you know? Kane kills himself. This is a shock to snap Cutshaw out of his insanity. Presumably many years later, Cutshaw, now Major Cutshaw, goes back to visit the old castle asylum. I'm going to launch this castle into space. <laughs> it will be my floating space palace. <laughs> By the way, I'm no longer insane. <laughs> Hey, Miles Davis, will you keep it down? I'm trying to reflect. <laughs> I'm just practicing my trumpet here. I made a deal with PepsiCo. Sippin' with the Miles Davis Quintet. <laughs> Look, I'm Napoleon. Yeah, I told you I was crazy. When he gets back to his car, he finds something. A mysterious St. Christopher medal just laying there. Oh, there's a life after death and there is a god. It's a happy ending. <laughs> Don't like that ending? I don't generally like freeze frame endings for movies for <laughs> starters. All right, that was the ninth configuration. If there's ever a movie that's made me want to go, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, it's this one. <laughs> Just think of what the first eight would have been like. The mind boggles. Yeah, I know. It's like Plan 9 from Outer Space, but with configurations. <laughs> It wears you down a little bit towards the beginning, but it catches up with itself by the end. It certainly does. I love movies like this. Movies that are just strange, but they have a method to their madness, so to speak. I think, that, is this the weirdest movie we've ever watched? No. Master and Anonymous is the weirdest movie we've oh, ever watched. Yeah. And I don't think it would be possible to watch a weirder movie than that. <laughs> yeah. It's strange, but it's self-consciously strange. And it's not because it's ineptly made or ineptly written. You have a differing opinion I on this? I disagree, yes. Eventually it was well written, but I... The, the ending is terrible. The third act of the movie I thought was good, but like the first hour of just the craziness of the asylum... I think the purpose is to disorient the viewer. Yeah. And give them a, a sense of, of, of madness, really. There seems to be quite a few movies out there where it's like crazy people are just like people who talk really fast and they'll make weird, obscure cultural references and stuff like that. You compare that to One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest where it's like you have people like sitting really, really still and that shows that they're crazy. I mean, it's I, not supposed to be an expose about mental illness. But I find that like crazy speed. Like I'm throwing around papers and I'm sitting in a chair funny. It's less fun than it is exhausting. I did like the last half hour of the movie, yeah. even though it was basically an Hulk. episode of the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think evil grows out of madness. I think madness grows out of evil. What do you think of that statement? Well, I wrote it down too, so I obviously thought it was important. It's definitely indicative of the madness that hit Kane. 
is the evil the Vietnam War? Or being turned into a soldier that's forced to kill and kill extravagantly. Was Cutshaw crazy? And if so, how crazy was Cutshaw? He took shelter in an imagined insanity. Yes. I believe there's a popular literary character that is a parallel to Cutshaw. Who's that? Hamlet. Oh? They have the whole scene where Reno goes in. He's like, Crazy Hamlet X. The more he indulges himself, the healthier he gets. So that's entirely about Cutshaw. I uh, also like the guy with the jetpack <laughs> and the medical crew, which is always on hand. I forgot about that jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> that was the ninth configuration, folks. We watched it, and we did not lose our sanity. Well, I didn't anyway. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's hard to find. I believe the DVD is out of print. I think you can watch it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh, while you're checking things out on the internet, you can go to our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. It's got many things to tantalize your senses and to stimulate your mind. And it also has a PayPal donation button where you can donate a few dollars to support our show. Yes. Some very intelligent people have caught on to this idea. They didn't have to do it. They did it out of the goodness of their own heart. The goodness of the heart that Colonel Kane talks about in the movie. Jordan, who says, love the show. You two are intelligent and witty. Anti, or anti. My girlfriend, Emma Liza, is curious what the poster on the background was that had the name Emma Liza on it. It's my classic blues artwork from the 1920s calendar. It features old 78 artwork. Ah, Miss Emiliza. Matthew. Kevin. Christian, who says, greetings from Norway. A different Kevin, who writes, you guys inspire me to really think about and analyze movies, not just watch them. Ralph, John, and Jim, who writes, Akira is my favorite anime of all times. It is the movie that got me to start viewing movies beyond action pieces and to start looking at them with a more detailed and involved thought process. Good job, Jim. And good job, the rest of you, for helping us out. And good job, everyone else, for watching. We've got a little bit of fan art this week. We haven't had fan art in a while. No. Chris Pollock, our old buddy, is back, and he made a poster for My Little Chickadee. There it is. I think this is Chris Pollock's best work yet. That's right. And we've also been talking about a little thing known as the five-day movie challenge, or the cinema immersion tank. I did it recently with Bottle Rocket, and one of our viewers, John Michael... Garipi or Garipi also did it and he wrote a big long essay about it. He watched Lost in Translation five nights in a row and you can find that at jmgarippy.com. That's his blog. One thing that John Michael says though, and he says skip day five and I totally disagree with him because the five day movie challenge is all about excess. It's about pushing yourself beyond the reasonable exposure to the film. So the fifth day is totally essential. Didn't he watch the fifth day? He did. But he said in retrospect he wished he hadn't. Oh, okay. Of course you wish you hadn't. That's the reason to do it. <laughs> it's time for seen it. Seen it! Anakin Kenobi Jin. Hey guys, wondering if you have seen Moulin Rouge. Crazy movie, but a fun plot. Seen it. Seen it. I know that you have some strong feelings about Baz Luhrmann. Yes. How do they apply to this film? I saw the movie in the theater when it came out. And As did I. I don't know if I ever want to see the movie ever again, but I loved it when I first saw it. For me, it was a problem of high expectations because ah. the person who I went to see it with, Tona, the camera person of this show... She was going on and on about it. It was like, this is the greatest movie. I thought it was inventive the way he used music, but ultimately it was just sensory overload and it just turned me off. I believe Jim Broadbent won Best Actor, but he won it for a different movie. We all know what he really won Best Supporting Actor for, for singing Like a Virgin. <laughs> He's terrific. Kay Schluchter, or Schluchter, writes, Seen it? The Last Detail. Jack Nicholson's best performance? Seen it. Ten, huh, seen it. I would say Five Easy Pieces is his best performance, but he does an amazing job in this. What shocked me about it is how vulgar it is. Yeah. Man, it's gritty, it's dirty. If there's ever a movie that makes you want to take a shower after watching it, and it's so different from Hal Ashby's other films. Mr. Reznor writes, Have you seen Sin City? Seen it. Seen it. It's a really intense ride, but like Moulin Rouge, I don't know if I'd want to go back to it because I enjoyed it so much the first time. I watched it like on a Sunday afternoon. It's a bad time to watch Sin City. And it just left me with a funky feeling all day long. It's so intense. I remember leaving the theater and feeling really cool. Kind of like when I first saw Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. I went to a bar. I felt like I could take on the entire place. It's a dangerous movie that way. <laughs> Liam Botting, The Phantom. 
seen it. Not seen it. It's got some great character actors in it. James Remar. Treat Williams plays a really fun villain. The problem with the movie is Billy Zane. Billy Zane? He's just not a leading man. No, he looks like a leading man. If anyone ever did, it's him. Yeah, but he can act charismatic, but he can't be charismatic. Yeah, if you want to watch a fun action movie, check it out. <laughs> he says with middling interest. <laughs> That's a perfect Billy Zane reaction. Logan Grandy, have either of you seen Yordowski's Dune? See, I have seen it. I have seen it too. <laughs> Terrible Alejandro Yordowski from both of us. Well, no, mine was perfect. Yours was offensive. <laughs> <laughs> He's very enthusiastic. He's the embodiment of enthusiasm. Yeah, I'm 82 years old. I make love to my wife. Yeah, you're drifting into Borat territory. Yeah. I think it's easy for someone to watch this documentary and think of Yordowski's Dune as the great lost movie that never got made, but in reality, this might be the best way it could have possibly been presented. It's sometimes great when works of art never happen. What's better, the Chinese democracy that Axel Rose eventually put out or the Chinese democracy in our heads? If it's never done, it can never be disappointing. Yordowski, I could sit and listen to him talk for mm -hmm. 10 hours. Yeah, he's... He's a... got such an infectious enthusiasm. He's like an excited child and a wise old man at the same time. And the happy ending to it is that Dan O'Bannon went and he took Mobius and Chris Foss and Giger and all those guys and they made Alien. Yeah, and it's hard to make a better movie than Alien as far as I'm concerned. That's seen it. And that's our show. Thank you for joining us for the ninth configuration. We hope it didn't make you too crazy. No, I hope we didn't make you crazy either with our little talking and jibber-jabbering. That's what we do and that's what we're going to do next time oh but before we end the show i got a gift to give you yes you do i got you a game about movies really cineplexity let me tell you how it works you got a bunch of cards in here you take two cards and combine them the example in the back of the box romance new york city and then you try to figure out a movie that embodies that combination. So Annie Hall and Harry Mazzelli. Sounds pretty fun. Hey, I think this would be a fun way to figure out what our next movie's gonna be. I am gonna pick some of these cards, and then you're gonna come back with a movie that fits that description. And then next time, you'll pick two cards and give them to me, and then I'll pick a movie. And the only rule being a movie I've never seen? Gotta be a movie you haven't seen. Right, let's see what we got here. I have your cineplexity category. A saint, samurai, or single parent. <laughs> Breaking the law. <laughs> what movie is Craig gonna pick? I don't know. He doesn't even know. No. You don't know. The only way you can find out is to join us next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Show me a Catholic, and I'll show you a junkie. What have you not been telling me? I'm not really a practicing Catholic. <laughs> All right, Kachow, please sit down. I think the end of the world... <laughs>